keep ourselves in wudu, keep ourselves in energy. Every type of hadith we just posted that the hadith for calamity is to give right away, give sadaqah, give charity right away to take away any type of calamity, any type of difficulty. Keep yourself in wudu, make your salawats, take the app and recite the salawats, recite the du'as. Sit at home and recite the, sal- the Arabic salawat book. The green book has the Urdu if you speak Urdu, even if you don't it has the transliteration and just keep reciting and reciting and reciting. All of them are an immense najat, immense salvation from every type of difficulty and shayateen cannot take the presence of salawat. Whatever type of shayateen is trying to uh, attach itself to people to make them and increase their sickness to make them to become sicker and sicker and sicker, its salvation, its release is in the durood sharif So if you know Arabic you should be sitting there and having a mawlid in your house by yourself reciting your salawats all the time, all the time, all the time. That immensity of light brings the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and we talked last night on wudu, things that for me are just common sense for my training but may not be common for people. Means that in the understanding of wudu some people think they don't have to have wudu at home. That wudu is for like when you go to the (laughs) market, you go to the mall, you do whatever you want when you're home, doesn't matter. And some people think they don't have to cover at home, I'm home, I don't have to cover. Look you're from dunya? Or you're from people of Akhirah. If you're from people of Akhirah there's more people in your home than there are people outside and they're all pious, all the shaykhs, all the awliya, all the salihin, all the jinn, mu'min jinn that are men in your home too. So why you're not covered in your home? So it means this world of malakut is not something uh, normal people understand. So they say, oh we can be relaxed, there's no time to be relaxed. Right now everything is under attack. You should always keep the, the cover because the, the lowest form of your understanding of cover is that you don't want the opposite gender to be attracted to you. But this is not what the reality of the cover was only for, that's the lowest understanding. The highest understanding is the taking your energy, that what, whatever comes to you it's, it's climax. And the pinnacle of your being, we said before, your two triangles, your lower triangle and your upper triangle. The upper triangle is, is your, your, your Islam, your Iman, wal maqam al ihsan. So, tanzila, whatever Allah is sending of emanation, is coming and dressing upon to dress the upper part of your reality. This is the house of the soul. This is the house of Allah Allah in the heart. So it means if your upper upper reality is always being tanzil, always being dressed, all emanations are directed towards the heart. They're moving into the heart, they're moving into the being to dress the holy crown of creation which is the head, right? If there's a light in the heart they shine on their face. So your two major organs, your heart is the sun, your face and head is a moon. So who's going after what? Shaitan is going after your heart and to destroy your moon. Somebody else asked, why these these scholars have marks all over their head and dark faces? Or because they read Qur'an and they don't understand it. When Allah said, we will see them and you will know them by the mark on their forehead. Not the self-inflicted charcoal burns that they burn charcoal onto their forehead to make they have like sujood, (laughs) you see the burn burn mark? That's not the mark Allah was looking for. It's the mark of the piety in which Allah gave a nur into their heart and like a spotlight a light comes out of their head. You'll know them if you have sincerity because your heart sees a nur on their face. On Yawm al-Mashar all of creation will look at them and think that they're looking at the lights of Allah looking at the lights of Sayyidina Muhammad 
because of the immensity of the nur that coming from their head, from their forehead and from their right hand. So when we know that the heart is the house of Allah and this house is going to be known by the Muhammadan haqqaiq, when Allah described, I created this creation in my image. What's Allah's image? Muhammadun Rasulullah Allah has no shaykh. That's all this training. The closest you, you'll understand to what the shaykh and to the form or to the understanding of Allah is called Muhammadun Rasulullah When I created creation in my image means this insan and, and the haqqaiq of insan and what Allah gave to it of a Divinely nature that I'm going to send the emanation into your heart. Your Islam is the foundation of your upper triangle. Your Islam is your source of, of knowledge of the heavens. Your Iman is a faith and is the holiness and good deeds. So then, then your religious practice should develop a faith within your heart, firm two solid structures on the ground that the pinnacle of it should be Maqam al-Ihsan in which you see Allah. And if you don't see then know Allah see you in everything, these lights then illuminating from your head. Remind me about the, the hijab part that we started, from there then they ask with these lights coming, all this reality coming, my son asked me, what do you define as holiness? Because everyone has an answer for holiness. Holiness is that which improves your soul. You have to have a belief in a soul, in a light, in a being given by God. And what is defined as holy? Is that when you believe in your soul and that which improves your soul and builds your soul, that is holy. Not a man say he's holy, not following him says it's holy. But what are you doing that benefits your soul? And the most powerful benefit for your soul are selfless acts of charity. Something you don't think you have a benefit in, more than your salah. Your salah is for you. Your salah was not that Allah gave you, we've given the talk on, on, on the usuls and, and the, 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 the pillars of Islam. The salah was not the reward. Allah ordered salah so you would be a good person and be charitable and be loving and kind so that your character would be blossoming and showing. So what Allah wanted was the good acts, why? So that you become holy, not that you become pray. <laughs> you walk around, I pray, I three thousand rakahs. No, this wasn't the benefit. That's why then if you define that to my son, that's not what makes you holy. Because there's Daesh they pray a lot but they were putting everybody in cages and God forbid trying to burn them. This wasn't the act. The acts that we do, the pillars of Islam were meant to be a, a character and khuluq. فَعَدَابًا رَبِّ فَأَحْسَنًا تَحْذِيبٍ Allah sent me with the best of character and to teach manners and gave me the best of character. Why? Because I did my salah, I did my zakah, I did my hajj, I did my fasting, I did them in such a sincere way. My character is exemplatory. Prophet is teaching for us, so with this good character we become holy. Why? Because we're, we're doing these principles, say, Baba pray, do all these things so that you'll, you'll have a humbleness in your life. And you sort of leave your head low to the ground understanding people's needs, people's wounds, how to talk with people not to offend, not to hurt, not to over, overstep your boundary. Everyone should know when they act with people they should know their limit and not go beyond that limit and not to hurt and offend people. That's why we prayed. We went for hajj to see the massness of our community. 
There is not one nation superior, look at Allah brought the whole of mankind. Hajj is an example of judgment day where you fear you can't get close, you're following around, you're struggling to make your tawaf, you're tired. Allah's reminding how are you going to do that, how are you going to survive my judgment day? You're just getting tired on hajj and, and scared on hajj. So all of these were for examples, why? So that the good character would shine. And how we know we became holy or we're mo moving in a direction of holiness is what I do on a daily basis to the benefit of my soul and are my acts becoming more and more selfless or selfish where everything has to be about me, I have to have a benefit in it. We got to unfeed people and support to feed people where they don't want a benefit. That's why Prophet described for us, yatim is most beautific. Why? Because you deal with men, give them talks, maybe they're all businessmen, they're going to give you donations. But they deal with kids who have no home, what they're going to do for us? Means it, an act of charity and goodness and, and good character and loving for those whom they don't have the ability to defend themselves. This is what then makes the person to be holy. Not that they prayed a lot. When people want to come and accompany you and look, so how much you praying? You're praying a lot, you don't look like you're praying a lot. Sayyidina Umar was following one of the companions the Prophet described this one, he achieved paradise and followed him for this hadith is a long story. Followed him and then after three days the, the sahabi asked, well, Ya Umar what do you want? You're sort of sitting in my house looking at me all the time. So I want to know why Prophet described that you're in paradise already and you, why you achieve these maqams and I don't see that you're doing anything different than what we're doing. He said, no I just learned every night I forgive everyone. Whoever is harm me I'm forgiving them. Ya Rabbi don't let me hold rancor in my heart. Means he was giving an example of character, not of an action he did. But his action was of a character nature, I forgive people and I pray that they forgive me in return. That earned paradise. So we're all struggling to be holy and our holiness is going to be defined on what we're doing with our soul. Am I… what am I doing is, is building my soul? And my soul, its, its food and its energy are in acts that are selfless and not based on myself. And this love for Sayyidina Muhammad and do, doing a mawlid and holding a mawlid, supporting the mawlid, giving food out for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad giving charity to people, food to people, those acts or what gives Allah satisfaction, when Allah's happy the soul becomes holy. Not by people giving a title to somebody, this one is Sultan, this one is… I don't know who anyone is. Titles are only from Allah and those are from the actions that most people don't even see between the servant and Allah But you should see the holiness in their character and in their deed. With that light, with those realities, you're building your heart, you're building all of these energies. You don't think that the crown of your creation, your head, your, your whole salah, the power of your salah is in your sujood. The power of your prayer, the pinnacle of your salah is in prostration, we talked before about it. Yeah. It's not when you stand upright. That's the least powerful position because you're standing up in the presence of Allah So that's, that's not… that's your station of ihtiram and respect. What Allah loves dearest in the servant is his sujood. As soon as he goes into prostrations he's nearest to Divinely Presence and Allah listening at that point. So it means then the crown in which he's giving the grace and emanation and the beauty and the dressing He's giving, that's why sujood is so dear to Allah because I made you like royalty. I chose you above my angels, my jinn and all creation because you're in the shaykh, 
in the form of Muhammadun Rasulullah Give you a beard. Why? It's not random, your hair could have been growing out of your, your <laughs> ears, some people grows out of their nostrils to this long. But this, <laughs> this hair that Allah wants, it's the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad Everything about us is the ex exemplary form and, and condition and reality of Sayyidina Muhammad I give you all this, all this grace and all this majesty. When you bow down to me, you show me how humble you are and that you're nothing. With whatever you've given to me, Ya Rabbi, I'm absolutely nothing. So when that prostration is going and it's so dear to Allah that you're showing yourself you to be nothing, you don't think shaitan is after your head? Yeah, that's the, your crown. If this the house, this the crown. So then shaitan wants the crown, don't put a head cover on, you know, let your energy go. Men and women it's no difference. If a man's sitting at home and playing on internet and talking to this and talking to that, if you're an energy person you know immediately you're coming under attack from all sources so your head is always being covered. You know as soon as you wash in the washroom if you come out without wudu, you're going to be burning from everywhere that lost its wudu. They'll attack you on your privates, they attack you on your feet, they'll attack you into your face and your mouth. The energy's all around you waiting for your, your, your blink of an eye where Prophet said, don't leave me to my nafs for blink of an eye. Why? Because he understood the full attack and teaching for us. You're under full attack at all times. They don't think they're coming after your head and when you don't cover your head you have your head is like scratching and itching. Who's chewing on your head and making it itch like that? They're ifrit all over there picking at you like the, the crow on, on, on the one who's on, on the cross. The crow lands on his head and tak 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 hitting his head. So it means we are continuously under attack. You walk around exposing yourself that the condition of the tariqah was that as soon as you took bayat and as soon as you're wearing the taweezes, the, the du'a of the shaykhs and the big shaykhs, if the smaller shaykh doesn't understand, the big big shaykhs they understood that immediately the jinn families will be dispersed to the homes, mu'min beings will be dispersed into the homes and those mu'min beings by virtue of them living in your home, praying in your home, you should have a source of protection in your home. For if they leave, you are in tremendous difficulty. If they keep coming back and complain to the shaykh that it's very difficult to live there. These people don't wear clothes in the home. They burn things that are inappropriate, they're doing things that are inappropriate. So all of what Prophet brought for us was for these understandings. He just had to say, do it, he didn't have to explain why. The tariqah comes if, if, if there's permission to give the hikmah of why these rules were, were installed for, by Sayyidina Muhammad <laughs> Cover yourself because there's mu'min beings in the home. And what about the, the beings that are not mu'min? That when the children are coming back and people are entering and service people are coming through, what type of beings are coming with them into the home environment? So, yeah, most definitely if you want protection you cover all the time. You want protection take your face off of every type of internet so that nobody nefarious can look at you, send their energy to come after you. We're under a tremendous amount of difficulty the door of the antichrist is open and he's moving and people like flies dropping pound, 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 pound. And Allah grant for us an understanding and these teachings, we want God's kingdom to come, the heavenly kingdom come, Allah then teaching these energies are coming upon you, why you're not safeguarding them? So the power of the pyramid was in the cover of the cap. As soon as you cap your head, you're sealing an energy that's moving between La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah and your Islam, Iman wal Maqam al-Ihsan. As soon as your head is covered this energy is flowing 
Which energy? The power of your soul. This energy on the power of the soul is powerful enough to push negativity away. When shaitan then inspired the release the cover of your head, it's like, oh your energy is out. And then they're just sitting there pulling that energy all day long, inspiring the person then for all the wrong choices and all the wrong decisions. That means there's a tremendous reality in everything that Sayyidina Muhammad brought and these are all for the opening of these realities. If we're trying to open our Islam and our Iman and Maqam al-Ihsan, at the same time What's fighting this dunya are the people of the lower, that they have no Islam. So what's opposite of Islam? Ignorance. Their deen and their religion is ignorance. As a result of ignorance is their lower triangle. What, what does ignorance bring? Fire, brings anger. So instead of faith in their heart, they have anger in their heart. So their ignorance and anger brings what? Fire. We saw them storming buildings and looking with horns and, oh God these people are going to be on the streets going from home to home. They're just ignorant, they're angry and they're on fire. They're Narani people because these like the door of Jahannam open on earth and now Ahl Jahannam start to march everywhere. Your only hope to save yourself from this ignorance, the anger in your heart and your fire. So somebody comes out and too angry, too angry, this is a med school. How could, how could you be so angry when we gave the conditions, something's wrong in your Islam because your anger is coming from ignorance, something in what you're doing you're ignorant about. As a result of your ignorance you're continuously getting angry. You could be ignorant of not knowing the fact that you had to have wudu. You're just going around all over this uh, land with no wudu doing everything. So it means you don't truly understand what this shaykh is teaching you of Islam. So it's med school, anyone tells you they're angry, something's wrong in their Islam and definitely they're not reaching towards iman. So they have no iman in their heart if they're in continuous state of qadab. Because the ghadab take away their Islam, their Iman, but without Iman there's no light. Because the station of Iman, Islam is merely the action, you accept it. Iman, what is that in English, is it called a noun? It's actually something. Iman is what Allah grants to you, Islam is not what's granted, Islam is your acceptance. I accept it to try to submit myself. When Allah accepts the practices of your acceptance, He grants you an actual light mm. and there's an experience of a light that comes into your heart, this light illuminates your heart and it's a candle that flickering, wuqof qalb and, and the vigilance of your heart is then your whole life is to, to guard this candle Allah gave, this precious light Allah gives to the, to the believer of faith. What am I going to do my Lord to, to, to make my faith stronger? Make your salawat. What am I going to do my Lord to make my, my faith stronger? Give, do acts of charity, do all these things to become holy. Then this love, these actions make the faith, you know, not a candle anymore like a fire. That was the fire that Nabi Musa saw. So we used to have the logo for the who shirts because that fire is ignited that's the presence of who in your heart? Who? Who of the heavens to combat who of dunya? WHO is, is a dangerous who. Why then? Why shaitan is reflecting and copying the heavens? He knows the fire and the who has to be in the heart. That guidance and muhabbat and love has to be in the heart. When the heart is lit with that light, lit with that faith, it's like a sun, nobody takes it out. But mm. first it's just a candle, it's a candle in the wind. Shaitan is continuously sitting there, <laughs> they have to go like this to hide from him. So this is why we do what we do, we're doing it all the time regardless I'm here or not here. I hear that when I'm not here then people don't come to support, why? No, Rabbi al-A'la is who? 
is Allah And you have a grave to worry about, not me to worry about. Everyone has a grave to worry about. And we have even more to worry because the Antichrist is right behind the door. So every action that we're doing, every, every, everything that we do is a vehicle for us to get our faith here. Allah opens the school for everyone to achieve their faith, every, every interaction is open to achieve our faith. Why? Because we all need our heart to be lit like a sun, not a candle in the last days. Good God, I've seen all of the people, we see them dropping like flies. Friend, family and foe just you know come two days they say a couple things wrong, you understand that their, their heart is being extinguished. It's not something that just granted for anyone, it's not something if you don't take care of it, you don't, you don't nourish it. You think by taking marijuana and drugs you're going to safeguard your heart or you contaminate your mind. And now the Antichrist and Dajjal begin to completely take over your brain and your process of thinking and that you could be with Sayyidina Mahdi salam doing these ridiculous things. You'd even survive all the phases of death that are coming onto this earth. Watch and see the ulama are not surviving. You think common people are going to survive? What were they teaching and practicing? When someone come to them and say, we'll do this, they say, I don't know anything about it, just you do it. They didn't achieve an understanding of what water was, but their knowledge then was for what benefit? Means these are very difficult days, these are not days where you think and you rationalize, hey, I'm gonna be okay, you take your chances because if one of these things attach themselves to you when your head is not covered. And you think at that time you want to come, if these energies attach themselves, not only that, they can attach themselves and immediately your leg become ulcerated because they're a negative energy. They go in there and they destroy every type of vascular system in your body. They can begin to wreak havoc on, on the human body. So when they're ordering stay in your home, stay out of these environments means keep your, your, your way. Keep your, you know, you're in a spiritual battle, keep your wudu, keep all your sunnah, keep all your sharia, keep all your, your covered for so that we can reach to a point in which Allah sanctify the heart and fortify the heart and that we can be with Sayyidina Mahdi inshaAllah. Allah Ameen. give us a life in which to see the arrival of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Ameen. Sayyidina Mahdi alayhi salam Ameen. Ameen. and to be under the flag of Sayyidina Muhammad here and hereafter, Ameen. under the support of awliyaullah, Ashab al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ahlul Bayt al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Awliyaullah, the Samai wa Firaq, Muhammadi Muhammad al Mustafa, wa bi Siri Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.